Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons. In this video I am going to talk about three mechanism of allelic peak imbalance and drop out of alleles. And basically most popular uh, test, uh, genetic test that is done in genetics would be first um, DNA paternity test and second uh, those tests that performed in a crime lab or a forensic lab when we compare uh, say reference sample uh, taken from suspect with evidence sample collected at the crime scene. So today we are going to compare these two electrophorograms and on the first glance uh, it looks like uh, for one locus these two samples have uh, the same number of um, uh, same number of repeats in alleles, so 8-12 here, 8-12 here, but for this locus we have 8 uh, repeats here, 14 repeats here, but only 8 repeats here, and it, it looks like uh, this person who gave this sample or evidence sample that have been collected at the crime scene is homozygous at this locus, and those it has also the same uh, calls for the uh, allele, uh, not allele, uh, locus, uh, which is D7S820. But now we have to think whether we just have uh, allele drop out here or this is person who is homozygous at this locus. So this is going to be uh, electrophorograms of two different people. And first of all, I want you to pay attention to this reference letter that represent uh, relative fluorescent units. And now you would see that here those peaks are almost like the same in size, but actually these peaks about 10 times bigger than uh, on the lower electrophorogram. Here we have 1500 uh, relative fluorescent units, but here we have 150 fluorescent relative fluorescent units, and normally we do not analyze such peaks at all because uh, everything below 150 relative fluorescent units usually is a threshold for our analysis, and this would be considered just a noise. But uh, when we um, take uh, some uh, samples from uh, say crime scene, it is very common that uh, quantities would be just minute quantities uh, and uh, we still have to analyze such um, electrophorograms, those it would be much more difficult because here we basically uh, dealing with a noise, so we have to uh, understand whether these uh, peaks are a noise or actually alleles. Two mechanism of um, allelic peaks imbalance I gave you earlier, but uh, as we are saying in Russia, uh, repetition is a mother of learning, so we will go over them today again, and I will propose another uh, mechanism. So, uh, first of all, uh, let's take a look at this picture. Uh, this is a PCR product uh, with increased uh, size of the uh, alleles or uh, molecules and we see that uh, those alleles that represented by small size we have a good peaks here but when size of the alleles or uh, molecules growing we have uh, uh, smaller and smaller peaks uh, until uh, peaks would go on and this is due to degradation of the DNA. Usually when uh, DNA collected from the crime scene it can be old and uh, uh, degradation just starts and uh, say um, bacteria can degrade DNA uh, or it can be exposed to weather such as uh, environmental conditions uh, say ultraviolet, water and so on and uh, 
Of course, DNA would degrade, and those molecules uh, or those DNA uh, that is going to be smaller in size, uh, we expect to see peaks because uh, when DNA degrades, it would be just broken into pieces. And it is not uh, very likely that we are going to find large pieces uh, of the DNA in order to um, use a PCR and uh, multiply their numbers because pieces are going to be small and DNA is going to be broken in uh, millions of places. So large size alleles just uh, can, uh, can be gone from our uh, electrophorogram. We just wouldn't be able to multiply them during uh, PCR. And those that is going to be uh, middle sized we would see severe imbalance between uh, allelic peaks of the same locus. So this is one mechanism, uh, highly degraded uh, template DNA that we use for PCR. And here is uh, uh, another variant why we may have uh, imbalance between uh, two peaks of the same uh, locus. And uh, first of all, I would uh, tell you that uh, small imbalance is okay. For example, if we would have a um, normal uh, quantity of the template DNA, still we may see imbalance between peaks. Uh, and norm would be, here it's shown like 95%, but uh, I would say that norm would be uh, that smaller allele would be by 15% smaller than the larger allele in the same locus and uh, so uh, but uh, good electrophorogram would show us uh, balance uh, between uh, peaks like 90% so smaller would be uh, smaller allele smaller peak uh, sorry not smaller allele but smaller peak would be uh, about 90-95% of the larger one. And actually, as you see, those alleles that is on the right, as you see, those alleles on the right uh, are uh, bigger in size and have uh, much more uh, probability of being degraded. Those alleles usually that is uh, smaller would be on the right, not on the left. But sometimes, as you see, it's also can happen to those on the left just because of the small quantity of the template DNA with which we start our PCR. And uh, another mechanism would be, imagine now that we have template DNA here, here is another template DNA, here we have one, two, three, four repeats. Here we have one, two, three, four, five, six repeats. And let's say that here we would have primer one, primer two. And basically uh, what we see for this locus, we see that this locus is heterozygous, different number of repeats. And this is what we see here. Let's take uh, now um, another case where once again we have a locus that is going to be heterozygous one, two, three, four repeats uh, for one allele and one, two, three, four, five and six repeats for another allele. But now let's imagine that here at the side where uh, primer would attach we would have a point mutation. So what does it mean? It means that this uh, primer would anneal and uh, would uh, make a good quantity copies of uh, this type of uh, molecule uh, this type of allele, but uh, second one, uh, we may expect that quantity would reduce because uh, 
such point mutation would interfere with uh, this primer annealing to uh, the site to which it is uh, complementary. And let's say that this is going to be uh, this example and uh, yet another example would be when once again we have locus which is going to be heterozygous so one two three four repeats here another molecule would be longer and would have one two three four five six repeats here and this time we would have um, mutation point mutation but uh, which is going to be at the three prime end uh, of the attachment of the uh, primer so once again imagine that one primer would attach here no problem with uh, this one but here uh, when primer would attach and each primer has a 5 prime and 3 prime and for example 5 prime and here 3 prime and here and uh, DNA polymerase always extend a um, new strand of the DNA from 5 prime and to the 3 prime and so we are going to have also 5 prime and here 3 prime and here and new strand of the DNA would grow in this direction so we also would have say 5 prime and here and 3 prime and here but if 3 prime and uh, attachment site would have a mutation then uh, this uh, basically uh, 3 prime and would be wobble and uh, DNA polymerase uh, wouldn't be able to attach and uh, we are going to lose this uh, variant of the uh, allele and this would be uh, this example what we have here when we on only have one allele but another is completely drop out and uh, so basically once again three mechanism one mechanism of mutation of the uh, site to which uh, primers would attach and uh, this may cause whether imbalance or we may lose uh, one of the alleles. Second mechanism for allelic peaks uh, imbalance would be highly degraded DNA and uh, in some cases we would see uh, alleles drop out and third mechanism would be just uh, depended on the quantity uh, that we use for our uh, initial DNA uh, template uh, multiplication in uh, PCR. So basically if the quantity would be very small we also would see that uh, some of the alleles just wouldn't be able to replicate due to this reason. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments, questions if you have any. Share this video with your classmates. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.